And then someone called me a doctor, like, hey, your baby's being born. So I got back, but he was, he was not breathing. I got pregnant in 2016, in the beginning of 2016. They had to induce the, the birth um, because I wasn't, my cervix wasn't getting open. I was already two days in labor. I was, uh, I, I was just starting to get a little bit scared. Um, so I told, I told the doctor, listen, yeah, this is it. I, 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 wanna, I want my C-section. The doctor told me, no, you know what? Just wait, you're already there. And I was like, no, I want my C-section. I know that I want my C-section, please. But then no one listened to me. Yeah, so the whole night passed through. I got the epidural. Uh, I was in completely pain the whole night. Um, and then the next morning, uh, the nurse came in with a midwife and they asked me to push a little bit because the waters was already like broken. And then they noticed something and then they didn't say anything. And I was like, okay, what's going on? They sent me finally to the, to the OR. Martin was with me. Like we looked each other in the eye, like, okay, now it's going to happen. And like in a few minutes, we're going to hold our baby. And then the whole story, the whole fairy tale switched. Yeah. And I saw her like, uh, like everything was start like fading. And, and I was like drifting away and doctors were pushing me away. So uh, like from one second to the other, like the fairy tale became a nightmare. They have to sedate me immediately. They noticed something, they put me out. And then I, I remember I, I got like pushed into a corner and, and, and uh, finally like uh, walking out of the room because there were doctors called in and it was like hectic all over. They didn't know what to do because the baby was stuck. Um, there were panic everywhere. So they took Martin out. Martin was, yeah, was thinking that we were dying. So he was like tearing apart everything outside I, I remember being in, in the hole in the hospital like like hitting the walls like what is happening and then someone called me a doctor like hey your baby's being born so i got back but he was he was not breathing yeah they took him out and they put him on this on this table yeah just before they start like uh, doing the reanimation on him um, and i saw him uh, his chest looking so strong they noticed that he was born with 20% of oxygen. So what happens is that uh, because of he was uh, already uh, stuck, he ate a little bit of mycomium. And then this mycomium, can, if, if it goes to your bloodstream, it can go everywhere in your body, like your brain, your heart, your stomach, whatever. And it will affect because the mycomium is that, uh, like let's say it's a poison, yeah? That is in the placenta. So I had to make a choice, like I go with my son, I stay with my wife. They took Rafa to the NICU and like basically froze him. They froze Rafa for, uh, for, for three days. When he told me that Rafael was in life of that moment of, of in, in, like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe the words. So my reaction immediately was, Call Dr. Levery. Call Dr. Levery. I need their help, like immediately. I, I need them right now. I, I need to I need to know what's 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 gonna happen. I need to I need help. And and that was my only thought constantly. And it was in less than an hour that our beloved teacher sent a specific uh, compound of mantras. Uh, they need to be played in certain ways uh, for for him, for Rafa, for the specific situation to put the strength into my baby. And I put the mantras immediately in his room. So it was it was a, a instant connection. Um, and I can say something that is, like I said, it's a miracle because immediately, immediately you feel the energy, immediately you felt the, the, the power of Nam. And especially when in this situation, when it's life of death and when you need this, like power it appears in one moment i didn't even ask for, per for permission for the hospital to put the mantras or anything i just did it and uh and that was the moment that i i, I collapsed when i was in the nico with him uh when I, I i saw him and i said i told him like mi amor i cannot hold you right now i cannot be with you right now but mama is here 
and I just touched him a little bit because it was full with uh, cables, like a hundred and something cables, every everything around him. So I just told him like, be strong, mama is here, papa is here, and I'm not gonna go anywhere, okay? So just be here, listen to your mantras. <laughs> <laughs> and I just collapsed in that moment. Every time that whatever nurse, whatever doctor was was there, they were like super relaxed and they were like working with him constantly. And even a, a few a few nurses told me like, we love to be with your son. Like, is really for me is 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 I feel like uh, one of uh, one of her uh, also now I remember. She told me like. Uh, I feel like uh, like there's there's something divine that is working through us. They disconnect everything by the third day. I was there with him in the middle of the night. So and I was and that was one of the first moments that I could carry him. So in the moment they start taking out all the all the things from him, I was holding him, and he's and I would never forget that I have a picture actually of that. He was holding my hand like he just hold my hand like. <laughs> yeah like I'm here mom yeah like it's okay you know and that power is is a power that Rafa has until today two weeks passed uh, for for the for the doctors and for everyone to to give us a free pass to go home since the first night that we got home Rafa slept through the night give us like the time and space for mama and papa to heal it was amazing. When you have me coming in your system, normally you have a, um, in the future, you can have either uh, you cannot walk or you, or you lose your sight or there's something wrong with the speech pattern or it can be many, many things that it affect yeah, the, the human body. So that's why Rafael had to go uh, every six months to, to, the, to the clinic with a neurologist, a psychologist, and a physiotherapist, everything to check on him constantly. From 10 kids that could be burned like this, seven can be dead. So for me, it was a true miracle. The first uh, therapy that we had with a neurologist, Dr. Bock, when he saw Rafa, he checked on him everything. He told me, Carolina, this baby is beyond perfect. So. And, and he said to me, and I will, I will never remember, I will never forget, he said, I'm pretty sure this kid is gonna be walking before the year, before when, when before he turns one year old. And that's what happened with Rafa. He was walking already when he was 11 months. The, the second therapy with him, the same. He was like, I really don't know why I have to see your kid because he's, he's perfect. It was more clear to me that the miracle that it is, the power of the prayers, the power of Nam, that it was like right there in every in every cell of the body of my skin, like really, no repercussion, nothing. I I have no words. I have I have no words to say how thankful I am. Thank you, thank you again, 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 and again, because I will never, never, never stop being thankful to all of you. There's no time. There's not a single moment that I wake up every morning when when my son says Buenos dias, mamá. The sun is here that I, I, I see this beautiful energy that he has. And it's because of all the blessings. It's because of all the prayers. It's beyond my, uh, uh, what, I can, what I can explain sometimes. Because then I can see a true miracle. Then I can see how even in the darkest hour, because it was the worst day of my life, but so was the best day of my life. I saw the light of Nam always, always guiding me, always, no doubt in my heart. When I when I was talking to, like I said, to the nurses and the and the doctors, like um, I felt the blessing of Nam completely around me until this day. <laughs>